Hello there all you tubies and tubettes and welcome back to Retrospects. Now today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on something that I was asked by somebody to do. I think his name was Alanian. Alanian? I believe so. Um, to show them how the suspension glitch works because they weren't quite sure. Now I know this is something that's been shown on other videos but I just wanted to go through it just to explain briefly how it works and a few things that tips and tricks that you can do with suspension and I will show you those around here and you see I've got a couple of vehicles over there that are suspension glitched out so I'll show you roughly how that works first before I show you how these vehicles actually run so if we get a, a wooden uh, block and we place that on a lift let's say three wide probably about eight or nine long and we'll put a chair on the back of that a driving seat we'll use a saddle and then we need to have a space of at least four I'll bring that forward one actually let's go over oh, there we need a space of at least four to do a suspension glitch so the first one you put the bearing on secondly I like to use these stripy blocks so that I can easily identify where they are and you will see over there I've done the same on those vehicles so that one's dancing for us there um, and let's put the block on there followed by a suspension. Now I want the short one, I don't want the long one, so let's put the short suspension on there and then a block on the front. Now that we can then connect to the driving seat and if I was to move that out of the way you will notice that all that does is move this suspension arm left and right but it doesn't turn the vehicle in any way and the reason why it doesn't is because it's not restricted. Its movement is it's able to move freely so what we need to do is we need to block it in from side to side that then will mean that the arm doesn't move freely and when it's restricted it turns the entire vehicle and that is how you do a suspension glitch steering Now this can be used for a lot of vehicles often used for motorbikes and things like that but it can be used for a lot of vehicles it doesn't require any wheels to turn it only needs um, this suspension glitch to do all the steering so if you've got a heavy item or a heavy vehicle you might need more than one of these to do it but for lightweight vehicles one will suffice so that is the yaw that will turn us around on our axis and create a steering so if we wanted to then create something for our roll so i.e to prevent us falling over from side to side if i put a pole in there again for long and i then create a bearing there and there we'll connect the blocks to those and connect the suspensions to those with the blocks on top so the same principle as I did before now that's just created two more suspension arms but this time we'll need to connect those to sensors and controllers so if I put a sensor on this side and a controller just here and on the other side a controller where was it just here and a sensor just here Oh, sorry, wrong way round. Let's put that on. There you go. And then if I connect the sensor up to the controller and the controller up to the bearing on the suspension arm, and on the other side, the same suspension arm to controller and sensor to controller. So the sensors we can set to two, and everything else should stay as it is. The controller we will set to 15, and then on the other side, we'll do the same thing. So sensor. To two, the amount of rotation on the arm to 15 in the controller, and then make sure that this one is pulling back in towards. So, if, i.e., if it's falling over, it pulls it back up, and the other one pulls it back. Now, that one wasn't right, I've turned it round, that one was already okay. So, now they're pulling back in. So, if I stand in front of this sensor, it should, there you go, push the vehicle in that direction, and again. The same over this way so you've got to imagine if that was leaning towards the ground it would be pushing it back up right so that has now sorted our yaw and our roll so the last one remaining is the pitch so in order to get the pitch done we would need another pole let's make another one and this time it needs to pull us back backwards and forwards so let's put that on there and there and again create the arms as we did before so there's one and there's the other now hopefully I did connect that correctly because you what you need to make sure is that these are actually on the top of the blocks the funny feeling I might not have but there you go that'll do it and then 
that has now created another two arms. Now again we'll need another two controllers. So let's stick our controllers here and we'll stick the other one here. And then two sensors, so one on the back there and one on the front there. Sensors set to two. There we go. And the other one set to two. There we are. And then connect the sensor on the back to one controller and the sensor on the front to the other controller. And then a bearing to one controller and a bearing to the other controller. And then one bearing needs to pull us upwards and the other bearing needs to pull us the other way. So clockwise and anti-clockwise. Now the one on the front needs to, that's correct, it needs to push us back. So if we were tipping forward it pulls us back. We'll set that to 15 again for rotation. And the same principle as it was for roll is exactly the same principle. will work this time. So now I set that to 15 and then I stand in front of this sensor. It lifts it up. Oh, so much so that it falls over. And if I stand in front of the other sensor, I'm hoping, although by the look of that, oh, something isn't right there. So which is not connected. That's connected to that one, which is then connected to. That's pulling it that way. That's pulling it that way. What's it? That's connected to that. It's at 15. That sensor's at two, but when I stand in front of that, why is that not? Ah, because I've not restricted its movement. As I pointed out before, we do need to restrict the movement of the arm, and because it could move backwards there, that's why it wasn't working. So there you go. So we'll put that block at the back. That should make all the difference when I stand in front of it. Now, there you go, and it moves forward. And if I go so far that it tips over like it did before, it should actually pull itself back. It shouldn't be able to do that as it goes. Yeah, there you go. So it just keeps knocking itself back. So forwards the same with the side. So I get in front of there. It's just going to knock go over. It's going to keep pushing itself back. So that's how it works. That's all suspension glitches, pitch roll, and yaw that will prevent a vehicle from falling over and create a stable vehicle base. Now, if you were to add a motor to that and wheels or whatever, you would have yourself a vehicle. And I'll show you a couple of things that I did earlier. So this one here is a wheeled version. And I can set this up to full speed. This will dart around like crazy, but it won't fall over no matter what because the sensors on the side and the front and the rear will prevent it from doing so. So again, suspension glitch for turning. As you see, the wheels do, do not turn at all. All the steering is created with the suspension glitch. And this is quite useful when you're making small vehicles. You haven't got room for getting a uh, set of wheels that turn. Uh, and then this is just showing you what you can do if you were to use thrusters instead of wheels. Oh, let's get out of the way. And this, no wheels in sight. All it is is thrusters, suspension glitch steering, and suspension glitch stabilization. And there you go. That is another design. Imagine if we were to put a shell around that. We could make quite a nice little hover car. But that's not what we're here to do. We're here just to show you how it works. And that is how suspension glitch works. And I hope alien that answers your question on how suspension glitch works but there's a couple of other things that i want to show you while we're in here uh this is a couple of tricks that you can do with suspension if i pre place a lift at the bottom of this pole here and then move to the top i'm going to use a large suspension for this and if i place that large suspension on the top there and then create a metal platform go a little bit higher a metal platform on the top of that quite big it will then press down and compress the suspension but what will happen when I delete that suspension is rather bizarre because you'll notice that the platform is now hovering midair uh, I think this is Brent Batch discovered this one as he often discovers quite a lot of glitches within the game uh, this one is, can be useful I've not quite figured out how to get it to stay up in the air I'm sure it has been described but what happens is it will stay there as long as you want it to but if you try to build something on it it will fall to the ground so as soon as you change the status of it and add anything to it it remembers where it is and it falls to the floor um, so that's just a little trick I just thought I'd show you um, and then this is the last one I want to show you this is kind of another trick I think Brent came up with um, and this one is how to show you how suspension can effectively go through items it doesn't have any sort of conflict with anything it doesn't collide so if I put this here 
and then lower this vehicle underneath much the same as you may have seen me lowering myself under the ground on another video uh, it then lowers just part of it underneath so these solid parts can't come back through the glass the other parts at the top can't go down through the glass so now it's only the suspension that's attaching these two together that's keeping us on there but that means that we are actually fully attached and we can't fall off yep there you go so it can't fall off unless I go off the end uh, or like that yep I can come off like that Oh, maybe. Oh, stuck. There we go. Can't get back on there. There you go. So, if I then pick that up, I want to try something else. And this is something I noticed the other day while working on a gaming court on another world that I might show you soon in a video. If I lower this underneath and then place my lift over there. If I then go underneath here and put some wheels on. And the reason I'm doing this is it makes it more stable. So I can place a wheel on here and a wheel on here. I don't need to have any motors attached to these wheels. They're only there for stabilisation. So they run across the bottom of the glass and the vehicle runs across the top. Now this should then mean that my vehicle moves a lot smoother when I can get on it. Although it doesn't want to move at all. I maybe need to turn the thrusting power up. Let's turn that up to full. It will definitely move then. There we go. So let's turn the thrusters up. Jump in the seat and then off we go. So, as you see it can't come through the glass it will just glide around on top I should have made this a bit bigger but there it is now another thing we did notice and you might not be able to see it in this video but I put these white lines here for a reason when you cross the white lines it seems that you kind of catch on them so colour on a material seems to have an effect I don't know why but it seems to have an effect on, on um, the vehicle and how it operates so this might explain why sometimes when you paint things they get stuck like doors and hoods and things like that uh, but there you go that's how the suspension gear works i hope that answers some questions i hope that some of you learn something from that and maybe you want to use these kind of things in your vehicle builds but the last thing i want to show you is through these doors so if i just go to these sensors here let me introduce you to mr miyogo no not mr miyagi um, Mr. Miyagi, you're going to have to move out of the way. Mr. Miyogo. Mr. Miyogo. There he is. Now, this is Mr. Miyogo on account of the fact that it is a combination of Mr. Miola's unicycle and the Grego mod to get all these nice slanted parts and, of course, the giant wheel. Now, because it uses the Grego mod, this is the biggest wheel available in game. And obviously, Miola created something very similar but on a smaller scale. So, this is a tribute to him. Uh, and to use the Grego mod, I'm calling this the Miyogo, and boy does it Miyogo. Um, so, we'll get on it and I'll show you how it works. And this is a suspension glitched um, vehicle. So, it uses suspension glitches to keep it upright. It will not fall over. It does try its hardest. It's only using one motor on the top there behind the seat that makes the one wheel go round, and everything else is just sensors keeping this thing upright. You'll notice a couple of suspensions on the side there. You can see them, and if I look under here, there's some more suspensions under there for the steering. And that is how it works. And sometimes it gets stuck. Um, so, yeah, so that's my tribute to Miola and his unicycle, uh, created with the Grego mod. I think I did something quite good. I mean, I don't know why I created it on its side. It just takes some while to put itself back up right. Uh, but I had to design it on its side because that huge wheel that it has. Uh, but let's get off and go again here we go and this thing's quite maneuverable I mean for a giant unicycle well nearly 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 is it gonna get up gonna get up there we go nearly went over but it still got up so there it is that was my sus suspension glitch tutorial and my mr. Miyogo so all that remains is for me to say if you enjoyed this video then why not spank the hell out of that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe for more retrospects and in the meantime and i think mr miyagi will agree see you soon bye for now